Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the third video of the Source Free Parallel RLC Circuit Series. And as we have done earlier also, we follow this problem solving strategy. These five points we'll take care of. So this is our <coughs> first example, example 8.6. This is solved in the book. But we'll try to make it easier. We have to find voltage Vt, voltage across the capacitor, 40 greater than zero, in the RLC circuit. So first of all, we'll see how this becomes a parallel RLC circuit. How does this circuit form a source-free parallel RLC circuit? That's my question. So now when this switch is closed, this is closed at T is equal to zero. So at T greater than zero, this switch is closed. And therefore you can see that the voltage source is only supplying or the current from the, from the voltage source will only flow through this path. And similarly, the current from the right hand side will also flow this short circuit path and it will not go into the left hand side. And therefore we can draw it as a two separate parts. This part and this is separate part. And now this if when we redraw, uh, we are only interested in this because we are interested in the RLC circuit. This is of no use to us for the time being. So this is redrawn RLC circuit and it is you can see they are in parallel. So it is a parallel RLC circuit. Okay, so let's come uh, to the solution of the problem. As you know from the uh, strategy, the first point is that for T less than zero, we have to find V zero and I zero. So at T less than zero, this is open. So our circuit will be something like this. Voltage source, resistance, this inductor will behave as a short circuit because the source is connected for a long time. And the capacitor will behave like an open circuit because now it is fully charged. So this is the circuit that we have for T less than zero. And so the two parameters, the voltage parameters, this voltage here is same as the voltage across 50 ohm resistance. And by voltage deviation rule, we can find this. So V0 is 50 divided by 30 plus 50 and multiplied by the voltage source. So this will be 25 volt. And now coming on to the current. So this current I, now you have to keep in mind one very important point. And let's see that the current because of this battery, its current direction is like this, but the current shown in the circuit is opposite of that. Therefore, this current will be writing with a minus sign opposite of the actual current. So minus sign total voltage divided by total resistance. So this is minus five minus 0 0.5 ampere. So we have found the two initial conditions. And now let's go to the second part. We have to find DVD uh, zero through KCL. Mm. So we'll write the three current equations for this circuit for T greater than zero. The three currents IR, IT and IC. The current through inductor we write it as IT. And if you put T is equal to zero, we get this equation. And now in terms of voltages, since this voltage uh, at zero was V zero, capital v, uh, V0 or V uh, zero in bracket. So this will write V zero over R. IR is V zero over R. IC is this current, I zero, sorry, I capital is zero and the current through the capacitor is C dV dt. And now we plug in the values. We had V0 25 and we had I0 minus five. So we plug in the values. So this is 25 over resistance 50. This is minus five. 
capacitor is 20 microfarad so solving we get dv0 is equal to 0 because the two terms uh, cancel or becomes 0 so that is the second step and now we'll go to the third step to find alpha and omega and we'll just uh, plug in the values in the formulas for alpha so alpha comes to be 500 and omega comes to be 354 so this is done now we go to the uh, equation 4 or from here we can just conclude that since alpha is greater than omega therefore this is an overdamped case and for overdamped case we select this equation so this is our voltage equation for overdamped case now two unknowns here s1 and s2 so we have to calculate those and we know from the formula s1 and s2 is given by this formula so plugging in the value of alpha and omega we get this result and from here we can write that s1 is minus 854 and s2 is minus 146 now we plug in the value of s1 and s2 to get the general equation so this is our general equation so we have the general equation and now we'll uh, go to the last step that is to find the value of a1 and a2 and for this we first of all put t is equal to 0 that is the first step so we put t is equal to 0 in this equation so this will become v0 a1 plus a2 now v0 was 25 so we plug in that and so from here we get equation number 4 and now we differentiate this with respect to t and then put t is equal to 0 so that is another step that we need to do differentiating we get this equation and putting t is equal to 0 we come here dv dt0 is 0 so we plug in that so 0 is equal to uh, this we equation 5 and now we solve equation 4 and 5 to get a1 and a2 as shown here and now we plug in the values of a1 and a2 in the general equation to get the final result so this is our final result uh, for this question now we come to the practice problem so the practice problem as you can see the current for 1.5 ampere current is flowing or charging the capacitor and inductor before t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 this is open and here also we have to find vt so same steps first for t less than 0 for t less than 0 our circuit will be like this this switch is closed so closed inductor will behave like a short circuit and capacitor is fully charged and behave like a open circuit and so from here you can see that the current this current will only flow through this path because this is the shortest path this is short circuit no resistance in this path so the total current 4.5 ampere will flow through the inductor that means i0 will be 4.5 ampere and since this is in parallel with this voltage drop in this will be zero because there is no resistive element here so i into zero is zero or you can also if you look here since there is no current flowing in this resistance current zero so the voltage drop here up will also be zero that means the voltage v zero voltage across capacitor will be zero So I0 is 4.5 this current and V0 is 0 volt. So that is the first step. Now we write KCL through KCL we will find dV0 dt. So exactly same technique KCL put T is equal to 0 go through to this equation and plug in in the values. Now since V0 is 0 this term will become 0 and so our equation will be 0 i0 is 4.5 4.5 and putting the value of capacitor solving 
डी वी जीरो डी टी एस माइनस वन वन टू फाइव नाउ वी गो टू दर्ड स्टेप वी फाइंड अल्फा एंड ओमेगा प्लगिंग इन द वैल्यूज अल्फा कम्स टू बी सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव एंड ओमेगा कम्स टू बी फाइव इन दिस केस ऑल्सो अल्फा इज ग्रेटर देन ओमेगा सो दिस इज ऑल्सो एन ओवर डैम्ड केस and so we'll select the equation for overdamped uh, case and here also we need to find s1 and s2 so we use this equation plugging in the values uh, we get this real output and from here we can write that s1 is minus 2.5 and s2 is minus 10 and now we plug in the values into the uh, voltage equation to get the general equation so this is our general equation and now we'll go to the last step to find a1 and a2 so you know that for uh, we get one equation but by putting t is equal to 0 in this so let's do that put t is equal to 0 in this equation so we get a1 a2 but v0 is 0 from here So we plug in that. So this is our equation number four. And now, therefore, to get the next equation, we differentiate this and then put t is equal to zero. So taking the derivative, this is the derivative. I am sure you can do uh, yourself. Put t is equal to zero. We get this relation. And then plugging in the value of dv zero. So this is our equation number five. Now solving four and five, we find the value of a one to be minus one fifty and a two one fifty. Now we plug in the values into the general equation to get the final equation. So this is the final equation, uh, which can be written neatly in this fa fashion as it has been written in the book. So I hope you understand uh, the techniques of solving this type of a problem. Thank you.